I don't often date my particular video messages because generally there is no need to, but on occasion I do. And today is the 6th of August 2024. I give you the date because we are now here in the UK about one week or so into a season of rioting which is an expression which I have just coined, thought up. Uh, there is never a good season for rioting. And I know that riots, crowd disorder, mob violence, all, all this sort of activity is not unique to the UK. It goes on all over the world. But living in the UK as I do, this is my home country. We have had major riots in many UK cities and large towns. I don't propose to discuss the reason for the riots or really to go into the whys and the wherefores. But I, I say, I give that explanation for those people who may be in another country or countries and who may be unaware of what's been happening here in the UK. Prayer defeats panic is what I've given as a title to this video message. Prayer prevents panic. And the reason I've given that title is because uh, this afternoon, in fact, as I was walking back from a shop here in Ipswich, where I live, I saw somebody wearing a T-shirt uh, on the back of which were the words, prayer defeats panic. Prayer defeats panic. And I thought, hmm, that's true. I, I didn't have the opportunity to discuss anything or, or, or to have a conversation with the young man in question. But I thought how appropriate that is at this particular moment here in the UK when our Prime Minister is talking about uh, mobilising a force of several thousand specially trained police officers, as I understand it, in order to combat this, these riots, this mob violence, where much damage is done, many people are injured, and some quite seriously, and many people are put in fear. And I have seen the headlines online and in actual newspapers where it is said that people are afraid to go out. Some people are afraid to leave their homes because they are afraid of being caught up in a demonstration, a protest, uh, in an act of violence. Because it must be frightening, and indeed for the police officers concerned, who are there literally on the front line, where so often the police form a line, um, uh, making a human barrier to stop the protesters, if we want to call them that, uh, proceeding any further. And they are in the face of the protesters, and I'm, I'm sure that some of them, all of them maybe, will be will be quite frightened. And the, the step between being frightened and being in panic is often not a very big step to take. Now, prayer defeats panic. We are human beings and, well, even with the best of intentions, we can sometimes panic. We can lose control. Not physically, but we, we can lose our senses. We can not know what to do, how to do it, when we should do it. We're just like the proverbial rabbit caught in the headlamps of a vehicle. We, we seem to freeze sometimes and we just don't know what to do because we are panicking. And that can happen to anybody, whether that person is a Christian or not. Of course, one might say that a Christian should never panic because a Christian should not be anxious about anything. A Christian has the Spirit of God living in them, therefore some might say that that Christian is immune from panicking. Well, for, to, to that view I disagree. 
I think it, it's possible for Christians to panic, for anybody to panic, given the wrong set of circumstances, being in the wrong place at the right time. But what happens if a if a Christian is suddenly confronted with a situation totally unexpected, totally beyond his or her control, panic can ensue, panic can follow. Well, the idea is to pray, and prayer defeats panic, the title of this message. Let's look at a couple of passages of scripture. I have my holy scriptures here opened in front of me already. Well, in the letter to the Philippians, to the church at Philippi, chapter 4. And it's often difficult to know quite where to start to, to get this particular scripture in context. But I'm going to start here. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4, 5 and 6 and 7. 4, 5, 6, 7. Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness or your graciousness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 4, verses 4, 5, 6 and 7. I paused because I had said 4, 5 and 6, but then I realised at the end of verse 6 in my translation, there is a semicolon, which means that it's not the end of the sentence. It, the rest of the sentence follows, and that's verse 7. So, be anxious for nothing, and that's a general situation. We as Christians should not be anxious. We should not get worried. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let we should let our requests or our petitions, some translations say petitions, be made known to God. How do we make them known to God? Well, we speak them out, or we write them down. We can speak them verbally, as I'm speaking now, I'm making a noise, or we can pray silently, or we can write down our prayers. Some people write prayers. That's fine. As long as we are communicating with our Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, that's what prayer is, communication. So be anxious for nothing. That's the general state for a Christian. And what happens if we are anxious for nothing and, it, and we, in everything, in everything, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, what, what happens if we let our requests be made known to God? Well, the result is, verse 7, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, for a moment, let us just imagine if we can. And maybe one or two of you who are watching this can very well imagine this. In fact, you don't have to imagine this because you have been in such a situation. But let us imagine that we are a police officer. facing an angry mob, facing people who are hostile towards us, facing people who are angry, who are hostile toward us, and who are armed with bricks, bits of concrete, tiles off the roof, uh, pieces of wood, stones, or worse, knives, bars, cr crowbars, you name it. Let's imagine that we are there facing such people and they are only a couple or three yards away, just a few metres away. Would we panic? Would we be anxious? Well, we might well be anxious. But this is where prayer defeats panic. 
Because if we are anxious, if we, despite our training, despite being with colleagues, other police officers, if we're on the verge of panic, or if we indeed start to panic, prayer defeats the panic. Of course, not everybody prays, and, and that's a great shame. Not everybody is, is a Christian. Not everybody is in communion, in harmony with Almighty God. And that's a shame as well, because people are missing out in so many, many ways if they are not in relationship with the Father through repentance and trust in Jesus Christ for his sacrifice on that cross to bring about a reconciliation, to bring about the bringing together of a holy God on the one hand and sinful mankind on the other hand, to, 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 to bring them together by his death on the cross. And that's the only way that the two can be brought together. Almighty God on the one hand, who is pure, holy, perfect, righteous, absolutely fair and just. And on the other hand, we have we have us lot. We have sinful people and we are all sinners. I, I hope we understand that. Everybody is a sinner. We are born, we are conceived actually, and then born as sinners. And therefore we cannot reach God. There's a problem, there's a gap, there's a barrier. The only way that can be bridged, the only way that can be crossed, crossed is through the cross of Christ, through what Jesus did. But so many people, well, they don't want to do that. They, for one reason or another, for many reasons, people want to rely on themselves. Well, it's, it's not very good, I'm going to suggest, to rely upon one's own self or even one's own colleagues when faced with immediate danger, risk of injury, potentially risk of death. Prayer is the answer in such situations because prayer defeats panic. So if somebody begins to panic, he or she should pray. If a person is on the verge of panicking, then prayer defeats panic. It, it really is. And I say this absolutely with full faith. Prayer is the only way to defeat this panic. There's another scripture well known in Ephesians chapter 6 of the letter to the church at Ephesus. I've just turned to it here and from verse 10 onwards the, the, there is a passage which is well known, relatively well known and I'll read Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 18. Ephesians 6 verses 10 to 18. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Well, that says it all, doesn't it? Our strength is, our strength rests in the Lord and in his power, not in our power or might or ability. Put on the whole armour of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the methods or the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armour of God so that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all, to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints 
And it's that verse 18 there which has the expression praying always with all prayer and supplication. Very similar, isn't it, to what we were just reading in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication. The same wording. The reason why that scripture in Ephesians chapter 6 is is relevant is because well there are reason there is a reason there are reasons for these riots going on mob violence and the situation might be quite complicated but actually there is only one reason and the situation is not complicated when there is violence as we have witnessed here in the UK or violence anywhere the reason is because Satan is at work. Satan who schemes, who plots and plans, who devises evil for people to do. He is the one who is behind what's going on. Ultimately, he is the originator of violence. We only have to look back, don't we, in Genesis, and I haven't marked this, but Genesis chapter 4 where we have those two brothers, Cain and Abel. Abel's sacrifice was accepted by God. Cain's sacrifice was not. And Cain rose up. And Cain was very angry. It says in Genesis chapter 4, verse 5, And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And then a few verses later, when they were in the field together, Cain spoke with Abel and Cain killed Abel. Violence, unjustified, unlawful. Satan is behind that. So those verses in Ephesians chapter 6 are germane, we might, as we say. They are relevant, they are apposite in this particular situation. Prayer Defeats Panic. That's the title. When we are in difficult situations, in fact, in any situation at all, whether it's a difficult one or whether it's just in the ordinary run-of-the-mill situation in life, we must not be anxious. We're not called to be anxious. In fact, we are instructed to be anxious for nothing. Do not be anxious, but pray particularly when we're in a difficult situation where we are out of control, circumstances, as we say, surround us and we feel engulfed in what is going on and we cannot do anything about it and we are vulnerable, we are at risk. And if we dwell on that, it's only a short step to panicking. When we're in such a situation, pray. And prayer, as I have said more than once in this message, it's that prayer to Almighty God in the name of Jesus. It's that prayer which defeats panic. <laughs>